This pattern certainly works for a friend of mine uh, in Ireland and it did well especially in the duck fly. Now start at the eye, two or three turns just to catch in the thread and then break it away. Now if I've got glow bright floss here number 16, this is it here, it's a white glow bright floss number 16 and I've brushed six strands together and we tie this forward of the eye and then I'm going to work my way down keeping the floss on the top because I'm going to leave some at the back and if you, if you look at the midge patterns quite closely you'll see that it does have a small impression of a wee tail at the back and I'm just going to leave this on now I'm going to break it I'm just going to hold the hook here and I'm just going to come in and break it off. Now I'll just put a nail up against it tight and this will cause it to break. And there we are. That's all you need is a wee tiny bit of a wee impression of that. Then I'm going to tie in a clear wrap. Full length of the body. A couple of turns to hold going up. Then we get some dyed black pheasant tail fibres. Around about half a dozen or so. Just bring them 90 degrees from the stem and line up the ends. It's important that you do that because what I want to do here is come round with a loose turn, keeping the thread on my side, pulling the tips in as close as I dare go, because that will help give me the taper that I need. And then just work my way up, at least two thirds, three quarters of the way up, depending on the style you like to tie your midge patterns, to that point there. And then I'm going to wind the herald towards myself. And this is the opposite way I actually wind my thread on. Now the reason I like doing that is because the rib especially will come up and sit into the, the herald, catch in more of the fibre and basically hold it much better than going the same way as it. Now I'll go back here. What I do is to hold that to catch in is to come across the pheasant tail and then do a turn onto the hook itself. So I do that and that and that there locks it down. So trim it away. Now, I do tie patterns like this, just to give you an idea of what the rib looks like. I come up with a clear rib, and that gives it a good, what I'd call the grey boy look. But if you want to change it slightly, I've got a permanent marker pen here in red. Now, the side it touches the hook, I'm going to colour up. Enough so that when I rub the fly, the red is there. It doesn't take long to dry, it dries practically straight away. So that's the side there the pen's on. And then just leave a space and wind up so that some of the pheasant tail shows through to that point there. A good half a dozen ribs or so. And then across. Just going to wax the thread a wee bit. And then take this away. You can tidy up. And then come back down. Now I'm going to put some cheeks on this or wing buds. In this case I'm going to use some goose pie dyed a nice hot orange. I'm going to bring take tear two off and then offer them to the side of the hook, side of the thorax. Now I want to tie them quite close to the tip. So basically when I put these on I'm putting both on together, that's what I like to do. Pull or just slide my fingers along the side of the hook and then catch them in. Now it's really important that you do get them to sit so that the curve, the natural curve of these fibre or the goose bites are coming away from the, the shank of the hook and the body of the fly. Just make sure they're tied in and then some dubbing. Now, wing and flash or I'm sure light bright as well. Uh, Angel hair do a, a rainbow mix. Uh, basically, what's very, very similar and what I've done here is I've mixed that through some seals fur, just to give it a bit of colour. And then you simply dub it onto your shred. Now you don't need a lot. Now what I like to do is get it to start off reasonably tight up against the, the bias. Just check go underneath. And then sort of build up a thorax. Now the last turn or so I just like this times come to the front of the, the breathers just to lift them at that point there. And then bring these forward and then on top. Hold them nice and tight with your finger and thumb and then come in 
I got three or four good turns maybe you don't more. Just to make sure they're tied in and then keep the threads, it's important that you keep the thread tight, you can break these off. At this point there is obviously some fibres going forward of the eye. Now I'm going to stroke these back. Just bring the thread to the, the front of the eye and then using the thread turns to hold these fibres out of the way. Keep it tight. And then what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to get some varnish. Or super glue, whatever you like to use. Just a tiny bit onto the thread. Just at the eye there, and then what finish. This will lock it in. Make for a nice tight knot. And then trim away your thread. Now, basically then you have to cut your floss to about maybe 2mm from the fly. Just come in. You'll get a length that you like. And what I like to do then is just tap it on the top of my finger. And there we go. And that gives the impression of the, the gills of the midge. And certainly fish like to see them sometimes. Just a couple of these fibres a wee tad too long so I'm just going to trim them. This is just a slightly rougher than uh, a fly. This is a fly that would, if I was fishing a cast of three flies, this would be either in the centre or on the top dropper, depending on what team of flies I'm actually fishing. And there we are. It's a very simple and easy midge pattern to tie. As I say, you can tie with a clear wrap. I mean, here's a nice mayfly nymph. So in the body, it's rubbed up over some uh, ostrich hair. Again, it's very simple. Uh, it gives a great impression. You can tie as a dowel back. And uh, again, the body is over peacock hero. Just with the red underneath, I get, it's another good colour combination. It's a style that swims slightly different in the water, so sometimes you need that. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that time.